right, cheers, folks, and welcome back to Modern Horror Unscripted. Today's movie is Paranormal Activity 4. So number four is probably my least favorite of the Paranormal Activity movies that have been released uh, thus far. Um, as kind of dull and typical as number two was, at least it, it felt like it had characters that could actually exist and it felt competently done and the story basically made sense to me. It didn't... Nothing seemed too contrived about it, but four, I think, is where the series sort of went off the rails here. And though it did, I guess it do fairly well at the box office, made it but made its budget back and all that, which is not that hard to do considering most of these movies are like uh, three million dollar movies, which is really really cheap if you actually look at how much it costs to make a movie. You know, the, the critical response for for number four was way worse than any of the others in the series, and I think that's kind of why. Instead of getting Paranormal Activity 5 the year after Paranormal Activity 4, we got The Marked Ones, and that came out delayed a couple months so that it came out in the winter instead of the fall. Alright, so Paranormal Activity 4 kind of picks up a couple of years after the end of Paranormal Activity 2 when Katie had uh, kidnapped Hunter. Uh, but it starts off with this kind of unknown family that we've never really met in the series before, but the connection happens a little bit into the movie when Katie moves into the house, I think, across the street with this kid who she's calling Robbie now. And I, we're, we're to assume that this is Hunter. And things are kind of weird and, you know, they give off a little bit of a creepy neighbor vibe. Katie's possessed by a demon and Robbie is... I don't know what the fuck Robbie is. But... Off camera, and this is explained to us, Katie has had some sort of accident and needs to go to the hospital, so can the family take care of Robbie for a couple of days? So Robbie kind of moves in and stays with, with this random family, which is, you know, husband and wife, uh, daughter, boyfriend, um, and adopted brother, Wyatt. And they start to film a bunch of weird stuff happening, eventually enough creepy things happen that they kind of want to get a record of that the boyfriend stalls something on all the family's computers so that their webcams will constantly be filming everything and I think they set up another couple of cameras just around the house as well. I believe one of them is a, an IR camera so it picks up the um, the dots from the, the Xbox Connect that the family happens to have. Eventually all this comes to a head with Robbie some kind of psyching Wyatt out and we realize that Apparently, Robbie is some other random kid that Katie picked up somewhere, and Wyatt is actually Hunter, and this whole thing was a scheme to get Hunter back. And I have no idea why it needed to be that complicated. But yeah, so Robbie convinces Wyatt that he's actually Hunter. Katie comes in and, and takes him. The whole family gets killed, and the girl runs across the street and kind of meets with uh, the, the coven, and they off her, and end of movie. This is kind of where the series really went off the rails, because Paranormal Activity, has, when it's successful, has been based on really simple stories. You know, things are going bump in the night. I don't know what, why they had to do this really complicated switcheroo with Wyatt and Robbie and you know, Wyatt's really Hunter. So apparently somehow, after the end of Paranormal Activity 2, Katie lost track of Hunter and he got put up for adoption. I mean, is that what happened? Did she volunteer? You know, hopefully she changed before she, she rolled the baby into the adoption agency. It's too much complexity to take. It doesn't make any sense. So fundamentally, from a story perspective, your big twist just confuses everybody, which, I mean, that, that's a big problem. Another, another big problem is that they've completely abandoned the sense of finding this footage. It's not like it was on a camera. There, there's no actual, I don't think there are any actual like handy cam cameras in this movie. The entire thing or almost the entire thing is recorded off of off of webcams, which don't actually look that good. So I mean that that that's a hell of a thing to buy to begin with. And then since you're filming this entire movie on laptops and on cell phone cameras, 
you really have to ask yourself why these characters are filming as much of this stuff as they are. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. The scenes that are filmed with characters sort of unwittingly because they don't know that the boyfriend installed software to film them on all, all of these computers, so they're just kind of going about their business. Yeah, you know what, okay, I'll buy that, but like, why would you film with your cell phone when you're going out in the backyard for some reason? Why would you film with whatever you have and have on you when you're running for dear life? Um, or when you're running across the street into this, this house with this coven of witches. You know, it's the, the big found footage trap. Why would you film that? And this movie just plummeted right down into it. But what pushes it kind of into almost so bad it's good territory is, is Robbie. This kid is weird. Like, weird. I don't know what's going on with him. The, the, the scene that always kind of sticks in my head with this movie when I'm I'm thinking about it or when I'm talking about it with other people is the the scene when Robbie is moving into the house is moving in with his family and he's going through his suitcase and he's unpacking it one item at a time and of course they're filming him for some random reason but he's unpacking one item at a time and he's saying what it is and explaining it and you know he's got you know a teddy bear toothbrush you know whatever and then he pulls out a fork a special fork and special fork well why is it special well it's like a hundred years old I mean it's not out of the realm of possibility for a little kid to sort of act like that because kids are kind of weird but it was so strange and caught me so off guard that it was almost hilarious I still think it's funny special fork I guess let's close up then the movie looks pretty good. Some of the scare scenes are actually, you know, really kind of well done. The uh, the Xbox Connect with the dot tracking and seeing the, the the demon showing up on that is a little contrived, but you know, it looks pretty good. It looks kind of creepy, so I'll buy it. It, you know, it's cool. A little bit product placementy. As much as they might be kind of decent with the actual scary sequences, or at least startling intense which is better than number two this movie is just really hamstrung because its story is so convoluted and doesn't make any sense so there was just no way that i was able to get into it so that's about all i can think of for paranormal activity for stay tuned and uh, check the space later for paranormal activity the marked ones cheers i love my fork it's like we go together i'm a marry this bitch so i'm gonna keep my fork forever